Uh, Joe here with uh, TDC Manufacturing, and um, so I've been working with uh, with Yamazin. It's been uh, I've been trying to figure out how to get the face mill to to check all the flutes on it to make sure they're all the right length um, for the indexable. I, I have the uh, the Mitsubishi ASX 445R, um, and uh, and so I want to make sure that all the flutes are the same so that none's hanging down, gouging, gouging my face, uh, you know, and, and kind of ruining the, um, ruining the, not really ruining it, but it just gives it a better finish when they're all the same level. Um, so, so what I, what I was working with, uh, with Frank from Yamazin was, uh, using the macros to check and rotate the tool, uh, 90 degrees because I have a four flute end mill, um, or not end mill, I have a four flute face mill, um, and so if you come over here and, and take a look at these, we have, we have four um, different sub programs that it's gonna pull up and each one of those is gonna tell it, uh, right now we are using tool one, uh, cause that's my, my face mill. And then I is just moving the table over one inch. Uh, it's a two and a half inch face mill. So we move it over one inch um, and it's gonna make sure that the flute is on the actual table. So, um, we're going to go ahead and run this program real quick and then you'll see it actually come in and it's going to flip each flute, check it, flip it, check it. Uh, so we'll check our tool list real quick. Um, so our tool list right here, we have, uh, I have it set for 31, 32, 33, and 34. 31 is the first flute, 34 is the fourth flute, and I have it labeled on the actual face mill um, each individual flute so I know which ones it's checking. Um, so right now they're all at zero. So, and, uh, and I use 31 to 34 because it's, there's not that many tools in here. There's only 21 tools. So these are never really going to get used. Um, it'd be really, really rare if, if I use it for any reason, but right now I can't even think of a reason why any of these would be used. So I'm comfortable with, with letting it put those in there. So we'll go over here. So I have program 40 and that's going to start checking them. So it's going to put it down, it's checking the first flute. It's gonna come up, it's gonna rotate it. It's gonna come down and check the next flute. Okay, so it's checked all four of them. So if we come over to our tool list, so now we have, we have all these right here. See, we have, you know, uh, 723, 722, 717, and 722. So these are all within one tens, not even one thou, but one tens, a tenth of a thou. So these are all really close. And this one's off, you know, it's still pretty close, but you know, I wanna get that closer. So what I can do now is I know that's flute number three. So I can take flute three and I'll go in and I'll rotate flute three. And so with this one, you can do it actually in the machine. Just loosen it up. You don't have to take it all the way out. And we're just gonna rotate it just a half, or just a, not a half, a, we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Um, and, and, and you know, not really in any particular order. So I've got that tight. So what I also did was when you go back to the program over here, I have four, uh, I made 41, 42, 43, and 44 individual programs. So if I pull up 43, that's gonna be my flute three. So I can just do the one and chase down the one. So now it's just gonna do the one flute. So we check the one flute. Go down to 31, look at that, 23, 22, 22, and 22. All these are exactly identical, and this one is only one tenth of a thou different. So that's just an easy way um, that, that I came up with to, to check all the flutes. It's quick, it's effective, and it's really accurate, as opposed to um, bringing an indicator out, flipping it around, trying to find the edge of the tooth, and then doing the math, this is basically doing everything for me. Um, you know, I call it the lazy man. It's a little excessive, but it comes out really well. 
Um, if you have any questions on how to do this on the brother, um, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it or share the program with you. Um, so anyways, feel free to send us an email um, if, if you wanted to and, uh, and we can talk about it. All right, thank you. So I had a couple of people asking how this works. So we're just gonna go into a little bit of detail here. Um, so again, this is my program 40. Um, and then if you wanna bring it in. Um, so uh, this is called G65 P8005. That P8005 is gonna be a sub program. So it's gonna pull the sub program. Uh, it's using, right now I'm using tool one. And then again, the I1 moves it over in the X axis. Uh, one inch so that the flute touches the tool post because if if you didn't have that then it would be Center the tool would try and do center on the tool post. It needs to be over to catch the flute um, now if we go into 8005 This is the touch off here um, and so to get it to rotate down here in the M19 right here M19 R0, so it's rotating it to zero degrees. Uh, if we go into 8006, which would be the first flute, my, or, uh, my second flute, um, second insert, it's gonna be M19 R90. That's gonna rotate the tool 90 degrees before it drops down and touches it off. Now, down here, in the, uh, it is, there's the N2 number and then the pound uh, 14, uh, pound 140, um, 11,031. Basically what this is saying is this is pulling, so the 142, pound 142, that is the tool number, uh, where, is, where are we at here? So in here there's gonna be, oh yeah, tool number 142. So it's saying here, when it's saying um, 11,000, plus pound 142 plus the tool number. So in my macros, 11,000 is what's going to tell the machine that on tool one with 11,000, it's going to, to add the number to the tool number one in your uh, tool offsets. So in the tool list, in this page where each individual tool's offset, it's saying at tool number one, anything uh, at 11,000 plus the tool number. So tool number one, it's gonna add it here. Now what we did in the program is we told it 11,031, tool number one, 42, plus tool number one. So it's gonna put it in 31 plus tool number one. So it's gonna be actually put it in 32 because that's the second one. It's gonna put it on 32. Uh, in the other program, if we go to 8005, which is the first one we did, you're, we're, we have 30. So basically whatever you do here, you know, 30, 40, whatever it is, um, it's gonna add the tool number to it, to that number. So again, we're at 30, it's gonna add it plus uh, tool number one. So it's gonna go 31 is gonna be where it's going to put the number here. So that's kind of what it's doing. Um, that's kind of how we, we, we adjusted the program uh, to get it to work. So if you had only three flutes 
you can go ahead and instead of putting R0, R90, R180, R270, you would put R, I think it's 33. Um, and that would do it, that would rotate it to the third one. Now, if you're going to be putting, you know, I, I had somebody say, well, I don't have an arbor where it locks it into place because luckily on my, on my face mill, uh, lined up in the machine, perpendicular is flute one and it's at zero degrees. So I didn't have to go in there and start it, but all you would need to do is find out where zero is, where you're gonna move it over from, so that I one, if you went the other way, I would have to go the other direction, if that makes sense. So I moved it over to, you know, positive, y, uh, positive X. And so my first flute is on that one as it, as it sits in the tool or sits in the spindle without rotating, one is on the 90. So if yours sits a little off, you know, you, can, you, you would have to figure out where that is and then you just put that in the M19 uh, line the R, whatever it is. So you might have to play with it if you don't, if you aren't lucky like ours is uh, here. So if you have any more questions, feel free to, uh, to send an email or a direct message or anything else.